Alpine ILX W670 and this is an updated head unit based on the uh, older uh, W650 which was a super simple uh, head unit lacking a few uh, features but in this video we're gonna highlight those uh, changes and uh, we will learn what's new with this updated version so here's the box it comes with everything you need in terms of wire harness it doesn't have a lot of wire harnesses since it's a simple unit doesn't have tons of features we'll take a look at that in a second but now it's time to take a look at the actual design and see what is new on uh, the uh, this receiver and at the first impression i'm noticing what's new is that chrome insert under the home button and uh, same as the uh, older version it still has those uh, touch buttons they are not physical buttons so if you are not a fan of that this might not be for uh, you and on the back side the only new addition i'm seeing is the uh, gps antenna other than that the usb uh, type a i wish i could uh, see an usb uh, c which will make a faster uh, data exchange in between the phone and the uh, head unit but gps is a good addition since it will help uh, navigating uh, better with uh, apple carplay and android auto going back to the screen is a 6.75 inch wvga which means it's not high definition has a resolution of 800 by 480 pixels outdated the technology but it's understandable because it's an entry level uh, receiver and my guess is that they use the same uh, display as the uh, older generation uh, just to keep uh, the uh, uh, costs uh, down but we'll uh, be able to confirm that later in the uh, video and it took around nine seconds to uh, uh, boot up and uh, load the uh, apple carplay now keep in mind apple carplay and android auto are uh, uh, wired only there is no wireless uh, feature on this uh, unit now when it comes to the uh, screen responsiveness um, the older generation was uh, performing better would give that nice and uh, fluid experience while using uh, apple carplay feel free to watch my uh, video i'm gonna include it in the video description but don't get me wrong it's not a, a deal breaker uh, some of you may not even uh, notice this or may not even care about how the screen feels but uh, i can say that being behind the wheel sometimes it matters to have a screen that is responsive uh, just uh, because you need that precise tapping and scrolling and you don't want to be uh, distracted now in terms of uh, skipping the song seems like it's doing uh, good it's skipping it doesn't hesitate uh, to uh, change so moving to the uh, android auto test uh, we are basically simulating the same scenario where uh, we have the uh, phone plugged in uh, to the car and we're starting the car and it just takes uh, one less second than apple carplay to load up that's surprisingly uh, weird but uh, that's not a big deal i guess android auto users are getting a little treat on this matter but jumping to the screen responsiveness again is not that uh, fluid experience as you are used to on your uh, phone even though it's a wired connection so there is room for better as i said on the apple carplay uh, side and now like a side note the more i uh, stare at this display the more it resembles the uh, older generation the w650 not the most uh, vivid screen uh, out there there is no adjustment for a uh, colors for brightness or contrast or anything like that it's just the plain screen so that's uh, a downside if you care about the uh, colors on your screen now we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh, buttons and see what are uh, they doing besides uh, changing the uh, volume and muting uh, the sound so we have uh, a touch buttons uh, volume down volume up and then we got the uh, mute button this one has a double function one tap will mute the uh, uh, sound and uh, the other one if we tap and hold will just turn the screen off leaving the keys on the only way to wake up the screen would be to press one of those uh, buttons now the home button has a double function as well if one tap will just bring you to home and in order to wake up this guy will have to press and hold any of those guys on the bottom phone will take us to uh, the uh, phone app of android auto or apple carplay 
And lastly, the uh, microphone button uh, triggers uh, Siri on Apple CarPlay or uh, Google Assistant on Android Auto. And you will accept uh, commands as how is the weather or send a text to whatever person you want, stuff like that. Now moving back to uh, the uh, main menu, that's how it looks. The uh, main menu, it's a little bit updated in terms of uh, the uh, user interface compared with the uh, previous uh, generation. This looks more uh, polished and... Uh, user friendly this is the uh, radio app and we have a bunch of presets with the possibility to switch from fm to am and of course manual uh, seeking of the uh, frequency we have a shortcut there on the top there is an arrow that will take us to the uh, sound uh, tweaking uh, screens that's a cool thing to have if you want to quickly uh, adjust uh, some of the uh, sounds uh, setting. So this is a new uh, screen, uh, seems like uh, you have a bunch of uh, shortcuts for the subwoofer and you have the uh, uh, lightning link. This is a new addition as well. This will work with the uh, Prisma link subwoofer. It's an uh, Alpine uh, technology and it only works with uh, Alpine uh, Prisma link uh, subs and it will allow you to uh, change colors of the uh, uh, subwoofers, um, speed, brightness and all that kind of good uh, stuff. So that is the lightning uh, link for us and that as well is a new uh, addition. Now let's dive uh, back to the main menu and I'm seeing a weird thing which is called iPod. Like come on 2023 why we're still having an iPod uh, function on those uh, head units? Who's using iPods these days? That is my question. Now let's go back to the uh, settings on the system tab and we have basic settings here but what stands out is the uh, connection status and uh, uh, wait a second seems a little bit laggy well that's not a good sign but anyway connection status this is a new addition it will basically tell you uh, what is installed and other so that's a way uh, to uh, verify if the unit was installed correctly or not steering wheel control will let you uh, uh, adjust your uh, controls of course you might need an uh, additional uh, adapter for that to work dimmer it has an automatically uh, dimmer has a light sensor on the bottom left uh, corner and now this is what i want to point out when the night time comes uh, you don't want a screen that bars you on the low lit uh, roads so this unit can get really dark on the uh, lowest setting of the screen which is great that's what you want to keep in mind when uh, buying one of those head units now there is no setting for the uh, uh, keys to uh, be dimmed, they will always stay at the same uh, brightness level. We can only change the uh, key colors and we have five selections, we'll take a look at that in a second. Now going back to the screen color which is basically the wallpaper sections. We have uh, five wallpapers to choose from. So this is new. The older generation would not allow uh, wallpaper change. We, if we have the color link uh, set on, it will uh, change the uh, key colors accordingly to the uh, uh, wallpaper. So it will kind of match the wallpaper color, which is cool. I'm not sure if you will uh, know how to match it on the uh, custom uh, wallpaper, but that is pretty cool to have. As I said, five selection of uh, keys here, blue, red, amber, green, and white. White. that way you can match this unit with the rest of the uh, lights on uh, the uh, dashboard so that is pretty cool now sound section it has a fader and balance that thing is a little bit laggy while dragging it around but don't mind me uh, let's uh, continue with bass here we have uh, 12 levels of uh, each of uh, those uh, options so that is pretty cool you have more than enough Moving on fast to the uh, equalizer, we got three presets uh, for uh, this 13 band uh, equalizer for precise tweaking of the uh, music and uh, sound. Now we're gonna go to the preset equalizer, we got a bunch of presets here. Yes, this is for the entry level people who don't know how to uh, uh, use the uh, equalizer bands and uh, all that kind of advanced stuff moving to the uh, crossover we got a bunch of uh, options here as well which is uh, pretty cool this unit is intended to give a lot of tweaks on the uh, sound side so that is alpine for you in terms of the speaker level each uh, 
speaker can be adjusted individually we got time correction as well and uh, i can really say that the user interface here has been uh, an upgrade from the uh, older generation it was ridiculous it was looking like some uh, uh, 10 year old just created some uh, um, graphics for the uh, user interface but this one looks really good subwoofer we got uh, again here 15 levels and it can be uh, turned off and phased really surprised how many options this entry level unit has which i think is uh, really great in terms of uh, uh, sound tweaking and uh, all that good stuff and we're gonna move to the uh, volume we have adjustment uh, couple of uh, sound uh, sources here such as uh, uh, voice uh, guidance on apple maps and all that kind of stuff now on the bluetooth section we uh, got just basic settings nothing special rear camera can be uh, turned off if you don't have a camera it can be a uh, uh, turned off from the uh, options we got those uh, parking line uh, adjustments nothing fancy going on here it's just a simple uh, adjustment that can uh, be done for the uh, cameras and we'll move uh, on to the uh, video setup and here we have brightness color and contrast i wish those were the uh, settings for the display itself but are for the uh, camera image and all the way to the bottom we got the lightning link that i was stuck in earlier that can be uh, turned off as well so that's it for this video if you enjoy click like and subscribe for more similar content